Back to the channel guys have we got some news <laughs> we're just a little bit excited today we got our um, parcel been waiting on um, we're just busting that away open it up um, yeah this is something that we've been looking forward to when we we're in Tassie we went around to all sorts of places wishing we could go in up and down and around and we didn't have the gear to do it. Now we have. Come on, I'll show you what we got. Yes. I am a little bit excited. A little bit like a kid in a candy store. So this is our new inflatable. Get rid of the toys first. That's our bow rope and um, means of dragging the thing along. Uh, lanyard, all important. Okay, a couple of rod holders and a repair kit. Hopefully we don't need the repair kit. Ah. Alright, the all important Jockey wheels for the back of the boat. Saves me carrying it everywhere. That's a good idea. Heavy duty. This is actually quite exciting. I'm loving this. <laughs> like Christmas. <laughs> okay. One pump. And as the name suggests, it's made by True Kit, so it's a Kiwi inflatable, and it's a um, catamaran style of thing. And obviously, there's a fair bit of manual work involved. One cover. Oh yes. Another rod holder. And another cover. We did a lot of research into this and what I started to look out for was a tinny. A, a aluminium topper which goes up on the, the roof of most of your four-wheel drives and um, utes and the likes of that. What I found was one they were heavy, they were bulky, we can't put it on top of our truck, um, there's no way that I can lift it up there in almost four meters and if we got it up on top um, it puts the truck over height as well as blocking off all of the, the solar panels up the top, so it wasn't practical. We couldn't mount it vertically on the back of the truck um, because the back opens up. And it, en it ends up just a massive amount of complication. So we settled for an inflatable. This thing here just answers all the, all the um, questions that I had, ticks all the boxes and it's going to save us a lot of a lot of grief trying to work out how to deal with a, an aluminium uh, tinny and uh, for the international view it was a tinny 
is just a nickname that we've given the aluminium boat, aluminium boats, um, small runabouts. So this sorts out that issue. It can be all packed up. It's a lot lighter than a tinny. So it's a catamaran style inflatable and it's four meters long. Wow, it's huge. So it's a decent size. Inflatable. Can carry six people, can't it? What's the weight load? Yes, it should be able to carry six um, six people on board. It has a very generous payload of around seven hundred kilos. I can't see us ever reaching that amount. But everything is just well put together. Of all the research that I did, this seemed to answer all the, um, the questions and, and tick the boxes that we needed. We wanted something that was stable in the water. We wanted something that was easy to handle and light enough to be able to handle. The one thing that um, switched my mind from being an aluminium boat to this is quite simply never ever seen surf life saving using a tin. They all use rubber um, uh, inflatable because they handle the rough water just so much better than anything else. I, I won't say it's unsinkable, I'm not going to name it the Titanic. Um, it has four separate chambers so if you were to be unlucky enough to punch a one having a shark try and bite out the back of it um, you've still got three to keep your float and the floor so to me that, that's just a win-win I'm going to pump it up um, see just how it all works. We've got to go through a few little bits and pieces. Um, once we've got it in place, we've got to register it, put a name on it, not Titanic, and go out and bloody enjoy the thing. That's what it's all about. We were so disappointed when we were in Tassie that we couldn't go to most of these places because we didn't have access to some incredible looking lakes. Yeah, especially Lake Pedder. Oh, that was beautiful. And a good thing is we've already got our boat licenses, so we, that's one thing we don't need to worry about. Nope. We're good to go. All right. They don't run on much air pressure, which I was quite surprised about. Um, to start off with, we inflate the pontoons to about one pound. Sounds ridiculous, but we inflate it to about one pound. Then we can put the floor in that in. So, let's get this on. I know exactly what I'm doing. I think. What could go wrong, Gary? <laughs> yes. Famous last words, eh? Hey? All right. Now. There we go. Locked in. And that's how caps to keep dirt, sand, and whatever else like that out.
some mores. And in all honesty, I hope they don't get too much of a workout. I haven't had to roll though since I was a kid in school. Ah, there we go. Easy as. That way. Lock it in. Allows full articulation. Lock. And then that's easy enough. How to sew them. Velcro. They're not going anywhere. They're as tough as nails. The stable ass, there's no movement out of that at all. I'm not super heavy, but that's not, that's not budging at all. So what's it actually made out of? This? Um, I thought they were Hypalon, they're not, they're a um, uh, hybrid vinyl, so that all these seams can be welded, they're not glued, they're welded and, and everything here. They're quite a Quite a sturdy constructed outfit. I um, I was quite impressed with them. Quite impressed. When you look at the different options available, not just for this, but the, the inflatables, there's one or two other um, setups that have this sort of thing. This is more like a landing craft, and it is suitable for very very shallow waters the the draft on this thing here is is negligible and you can do beach landings on it quite comfortably over the end of the bow for diving um, be it scuba snorkeling or just having a swim they're quite suitable for that and it makes it easy to get out of the water and into that you're not trying to climb over the side of the boat. I'm very, very impressed. Um, and very excited by the looks of it, Gary. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can see the adventures. I can see the, the fun and games happening here. Yeah, looking forward to getting out on the water. We'll have a look at how these fit on. Okay, it's actually quite clever. And as usual, Gary doesn't read instructions. So, geez, I've got some tension. Okay. Sit on there, lock on. That's in the running in the water mode. Pull it out and down. And quick lift up. There you go. It's quite a clever system, actually. Lock. Down. And we can drag that around. All right, let me put the bow rope on. I'm glad they put this in. It's pretty light. It's surprisingly light. I wouldn't like to drag it for miles. But... Yeah, that's one hand. The whole beauty of this thing here is it weighs 45 kilos, not 145 kilos. The lightest tinny that I found, I think from memory, was about 
73 kilos. Um, and it wasn't as big as this, it was 3.5 metres. And um, if I remember rightly, that, that was about 73 kilos, plus the outboard. The outboard on this uh, is 43 kilos dry. We've got a 12, um, 12 litre fuel can for it, which I may either increase or have a second fuel can. I don't want to be topping up fuel in the boat while we're traveling, but with the quick release uh, arrangements on the, on the fuel, just swap them over and there's no spillage of fuel. So that'll give us plenty of range. I believe at full throttle, you'd be looking at approximately six liters of fuel per hour. So it's 12 liters, so it'll give you two hours. That's at full noise. I'm not gonna be running the thing at full noise. So two hours of running, um, and it'll probably scoot along. I'd expect it to be sort of up in around about the 20 knot mark with that, that engine that's on there. So even if we're doing half throttle, um, I'd expect to get three hours running out of it. But we'll see. Obviously enough there, conditions change, wind and load and all the rest of it. Um, I'll throw in the, the seat bag. We've got a dry bag um, there as well to put our camera gear and just personal belongings. Everything's quite well made and quite well thought out actually. I'm, I'm suitably impressed, I guess you could say. I'm one of these people that likes his toys. Okay, and of course, everything goes in there, zip locks. So it carries a fair bit of gear. And if need be, we can carry that with us when we're not in the boat. A couple of rod holders. So, we do intend to do a bit of fishing. Now we're off. <laughs> it's pretty simple, straightforward, just well thought out. If you're out of the water and you want to pull yourself up, you can, but just go around the side, around the front. That makes sense. If you can get it there. Nope. Just there. Happy days. That works like a charm. Gives you something to grab hold of to pull yourself up into the boat. You can see yourself buzzing along in the water. Yes. Got to get back in the truck, Gary. Yes. Excellent. Yay! <laughs> Our new 20 horse Tohatsu. We've ended up buying a new Tohatsu uh, four stroke 20 horse. You might think that a 20 horse is a little bit uh, big for a kit like this. You can go 15 horse or 20 horse in this same physical size outboard same weight so 20 horses there go as far as i'm concerned um, there's never enough power what i like about this is it's batteryless fuel injected the the fuel injection system it's quite a clever clever thing and i can see people saying how in hell's name do you have a fuel injected engine and no battery? 
I'm glad you asked. Because now I can explain a little bit about my knowledge on, on engines and how things work. It's rather clever. It's not new, but it's clever. The first pull, because it's batteryless, there's no electric start. So the first pull on the recoil start um, charges the capacitors in the system. The second pull allows the thing to start using the, the energy stored in the capacitors to give you ignition and initial fuel injection. Once it's running, everything works normally then. Um, quite clever. Very responsive. We haven't run it yet. Um, as soon as we put it in the water, yeah, this all will be together. I'm not going to try and fit it on there now. So I'm looking forward to getting into the water. We've got to go through the registration routine, um, register the motor on the boat, put some numbers on the boat, then we'll hit the water. So there's a few days away yet before we can do all of that. Um, but certainly looking forward to it. It's no good playing with it here. It's got to be out in the water. So this here will be an addition to the arsenal, as I said once before in another video. Um, we intend to keep adding to our arsenal, our bag of tricks and toys, um, to add to our own adventures. And we're just hoping that everyone else comes along for the ride. Um, I don't know how much fishing I'll get done. Yeah, I'll try. I've never been a real good fisherman. My father was. He taught me a few things many years ago. 99% of it I've forgotten. So that's a whole new learning curve again for me. But as far as the adventures are concerned, oh, yeah, we, we are really thrilled and looking forward to it all. This is going to be a whole lot of fun. It opens up a, a, just a whole new line of adventure for us. We can go up and down some of these rivers and streams and out in the water. I'm looking forward to doing a little bit of snorkeling. I haven't done that for many, many years. So we're going to go out and play. Have, a, have an absolute ball. So I'll wrap it up here. We'll put this thing here away. I've got to work out now how I'm going to put the inflated inflatable on our trailer. We dragged that all through the Victorian high country um, to take it down and get the sign writing and that done. Um, being the type of material it is, we can't just put stickers on it. They will all peel off the first time we deflate it and then reinflate it. So we've got to get it sign written. Um, that's a job for the sign writers. Once we've done that, we'll definitely be in the water and we'll take you along for the ride. Hopefully, um, yeah, you'll enjoy the ride as much as we do. So cheers for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Just remember, if you like the content of this, big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. Cheers, guys.